Hello everybody in YouTube land. Thanks for joining me for this episode of uh, Alice in Wonderland. Uh, this is a custom campaign. I believe it's made by Beard. Someone might tell me if I'm wrong. Maybe it says at the beginning. Nope. Probably says at the end, but I don't want to peek ahead just in case. But this is a custom campaign uh, centered around, you guessed it, Alice in Wonderland. So let's read the prologue, shall we? It is made by Beard. I'm the best. The incident was at first assumed to be a case of fatigue and paranoia. A traveling Englishwoman by the name of Alice Little collapsed screaming as the train arrived at Arkham's Northside Station. Other passengers tried to console her, but Miss Little was in a state of sheer panic. The man dressed in newspaper, the goat and the beetle, you saw them too, didn't you? She pled to onlookers, but they only shook their heads in bewilderment. It's still following me, after all this distance. How far will be far enough? The young woman's panic quickly mounted, and the passengers called for the conductor to escort her off the train. She begged them not to keep her, that she must continue her journey immediately, but her protests were ignored. Uh, sorry, that's just reading chat. I was got through there. Uh, who would believe such a preposterous story? You yourself might have doubted her too, had you not also seen the strange figures that Alice described in the brief moment before she collapsed. You depart the train as soon as possible, but find no trace of Miss Little on the platform. Porters tell you that police got involved and decided to take her to Arkham Asylum for temporary care. You wrinkle your nose at the prospect of the infamous sanitarium doing her any sort of good. Whatever Alice saw on the train must have existed, however briefly, and you must speak with her to find out what it was and why it fills her with such a powerful dread. You head home to prepare your, to have an in-depth talk with Miss Little. Arkham has long been plagued by the weird and ghoulish and arcane. It may not have been as big a shock to you as you might have been to others, but the fact that a foreigner was affected immediately upon arriving in Arkham strikes you especially odd. As you gather your things at home, your mind runs over the head hundreds of possible evils that could be haunting Miss Little. Each less pleasant than the last. You pocket some weapons and extra materials on the off chance that you'll have to confront anything sinister. Your own house lies across the city from the asylum, giving you plenty of time to speculate as you trek, uh, uh, trek over to Arkham's downtown district. You hope that it's just your eyes playing on your fears, but the city seems darker than it should be for a summer afternoon. I recently did a return to Path of Carcosa with Monterey Jack using his fan-made replacements, making him completely unable to fight since I didn't take the whip. I mean, I think... Uh, I think... Monterey Jackson, like, he's, I think he's very strong. His ability is very good. His ability is just, uh, play the game, but we're gonna, like, give you treats while it's happening. Scenario 1. Arkham in Wonderland. You enter the asylum and approach the receptionist, expecting a long and tedious chain of permissions, but are pleasantly surprised to find that Alice can be freely visited. Miss Little was quite cooperative upon her arrival and was granted a furnished room without restraints. An orderly escorts you down one of the less unpleasant halls and into Alice's room. She sits on the edge of the bed with her hands folded, and her head snaps up as you enter, apprehension plastered on her face. Once you make it clear that you believe her story, however, Alice relaxes visibly, but her worried expression remains. What you saw was a dream, she explains slowly. One from my childhood, a strange place called Wonderland. Oh my god, that's the name of the thing. Wait, and her name's Alice? What the frick? How innocent it once was, her voice trails off and she begins to tremble. When I was younger, I believed it to be a real place. It all seemed so real to me then, and it was that belief that drew the attention of something dark. A great and terrible creature that dwells in the shadows and feeds on dreams. But rather than devour Wonderland, the creature strengthened it. No, raised it like cattle. Fattened it. Wonderland and became more vivid and real than I ever imagined it could be. It grew beyond my ability to control. Now in recent months, my dreams have begun to manifest in the real world. Her story is utterly fantastical, but you find yourself drawn in even more. Alice continues with deep terror beginning to surface. The creature is using me to bridge the gap of reality. It wishes to merge the waking world with Wonderland in order to, con order to consume them both. Oh, someone's a hungry boy. It began in my hometown in England, where the world began to unravel around me. I fled, hoping to find a way to escape it, but it follows me no matter where I go. Alice looks to you with exhausted desperation in her eyes. And now that I cannot leave it, it is only a matter of time until your own city of Arkham begins to unravel too. You must find a way to stop this being for your own sake, if not for mine. Please, you must find a way. 
You reassure Alice to the best of your ability and depart the asylum, wondering how you can even begin this bizarre task. As you exit, the familiar sight of Arkham's downtown district ripples before your eyes like a band of hot air in the summer, slowly beginning to distort. Before you can act any further, a grinning mouth appears before you and a striped cat soon blossoms around it. Welcome to Wonderland, it suddenly purrs, or perhaps you had better welcome Wonderland instead. The longer you wait, the more of it there is, and the less of you there may be. Gurath Naka is hungry, and it is very nearly summertime. Wow, that's crazy that Lewis Carroll made a guy named Gurath Naka, and it just, like, works perfectly with the lore of Arkham Files. Isn't that kind of nuts? Anyway, gather all the cards from the following sets. Set the Cheshire Cat a counter set aside. Set the playing cards aside out of play. Put the Arkham Asylum, Bank of Arkham, Independent Square in locations with their non-Wonderland Wonderland sides revealed. And we begin play on the Asylum, and we shuffle the deck, and we are ready to begin. A Tide of Madness. Strange waves of distortion sweep over Arkham, devolving it quickly into chaos. The city is rapidly being uh, warped and blended with the wonderful uh, wonderland of Alice's dreams. Buildings and landmarks distort into unfamiliar forms, while the people unfortunate enough to be caught in these ripples are likewise distorted. You hope that you can find some way to stop or reverse these changes before you're, you yourself are transformed by the uh, events. I shouldn't have read chat when I'm trying to read. It just uh, ruins everything. Uh, you question the strange cat, but it speaks in circular logic and nonsensical terms. You get the feeling that it's testing you rather than helping you. If you want actual answers on how to stop Gurith Naka, you'll have to scour the city and watch the changes up close. Three Doom advances, two player clues advances the act. Let's uh, do our opening mulligan, shall we? Uh, so Zoe has the damned. Uh, so on our first turn, we get two fewer actions to take for this scenario. Poggy. She's a 9-6? And Min's a 7-7. Seven, seven. I know, I know Min like the back of my hand. Anyway, what's, what's her ability? <laughs> okay. So... I'm like willing to keep... What's the shroud on this location? It's 3. And it has victory 2? Count me in! Victory 2! Count me in! Count me in. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to keep these three. And then these two can go. This does seem kind of cool. This does seem kind of cool. All right, now over here, this isn't the weapon we want, obviously, but it is the weapon I am going to keep. Uh, I think I'm also going to keep the kill spell, just in case we draw an enemy early on. Six cents is a good start. You should not be here. Yeah. Like, this is honestly all fine. It's not like a gangbusters opening hand, but it is something. It is something. Okay. Well, we should have Zoe go first, because she is going to definitely tempt fate. And we get a draw card! So we had uh, three bless, three curse, and then we draw a card. Uh, and honestly, give me Greta before you give me anything else. And that'll be our one action for the turn. Now, Min... We're going to play the catalog. Uh, and then we are going to play the Scroll of Secrets. Sorry, we're going to play with, play with that with uh, this cache off the catalog. Uh, and then also as well, give me, um, give me the old key ring. Let's just start right away. All right, so exhausted and spend one secret. Look at the bottom card of any investigator's deck. They either discard it, uh, add it to its owner's hand, place it on top of the bottom of the deck. Place it on, all right. 
All right, well, we're gonna do that, I think, for us right now. I will put that in my hand. Thank you, game. All right, upkeep. We drew another Schaffner's. We drew a Ward of Protection. What does Schaffner's commit for? A book, how convenient. All right, anyway, we got one of three. Let's see what the, uh, what the encounter deck does here. Hunting Shade, Hunter Aloof. Hunting Shade location gets plus two Shroud. If there are no clues on its location, Hunting, sh hunting Shade loses Aloof and gets plus one fight and plus one damage. We do not appreciate that here, just so you know, Hunting Shade. <sighs> Spawn, location with the most clues. We got Twisted Citizen, Investigator, Prey Investigator with the most clues. If there are no clues on Twisted Citizen's location, it gains Hunter. At the end of the Mythos phase, if there are any amount of clues on Twisted Citizen's location, place one Doom on Twisted Citizen. Okay. Well, we'll just put that on our location because they all have an equal number of clues and we'll gain a resource. Sweet. Okay. So this guy gets one doom. Because at the end of the Mythos phase, if there are any amount of clues on Twisted Citizen's location, we place one Doom on Twisted Citizen. Absolutely easy, not at all a problem. Um... So I think what we do is we start here, and we're going to play this toe-to-toe. -to -toe. You can attack me. I'm ready for it. Uh, so, it'll deal plus one damage, and it's automatically successful, and this enemy performs an attack against me. So this enemy is now dead. I'm going to use this window to uh, uh, exhaust and deal a damage to Greta to discover a clue at our location. A uh, thank you very much. Um, for our next action, I'm going to spend two for the survival knife, but it's going to come off this catalog, because that's kind of why it's here, right? Um, and then for our last action, why don't you give me a card? Hey, that's really good. That's really good. Okay. We don't want to get attacked by this guy. There's no reason to. We can just kill him next turn. It's not a problem. Uh, Min is going to... We're going to play the scavenging. Sure, we can go there. Um, we're then going to... Oh, heal one horror limit once per turn. I mean, that is actually helpful for Zoe. Investigators and Independent Square get plus two skill value and all tests made on or against cards with the shadow trait. Boop. Moving here. All right. I need to familiarize myself with... Uh, Let's look at the skill timing, because we're going to use things here. Skill test timing. Do, 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 do. After you successfully investigate by two or more. Gee, all the locations have helpful abilities and no unrevealed side. That isn't ominous at all. It's true. It is true. I wonder if, uh, what if we're going to have some problems coming up soon. <laughs> and maybe it'll be like the inverse of it. Who knows? Yeah, I'm going to imagine if I use this Schaffner's catalog here, I do not get it back on uh, the scavenge. I think, I actually don't even know. And, you know. It's okay, but we're going to uh, use uh, we're going to use the old key ring here. Actually, no, no. First things first, we're going to use the scroll of secrets. Let's look and see what we got on the bottom. Oh yeah, I'll discard that. I forgot that was there. Deplorative state. Make so much to follow. Yeah, that's what I figured. They get discarded. Uh, they get uh, in uh, the skill test ends probably right because they just kind of hover in the thing. All right, 
Uh, yeah, we're going to investigate this location. We're going to use this old key ring. Uh, I'm going to commit the Schaffners. If we get that in the discard pile, is that a good thing? Yeah. And we'll also commit the deduction here. We'll do both. Give me both of those. So we have a uh, six to zero. Four to zero. Two to zero. Hey, you know, we ate two of the curse tokens. Uh, and then this goes here, this goes here. Perfect. So we played the scavenging, we moved, we investigated. All right, upkeep phase. Just waiting for the Elder Sign. Now, the Elders, we're never going to draw the Elder Sign in this campaign. If you're waiting for a chat, don't worry about it. Hunter aloof. It gets plus two shroud. If there are no clues on a location, it loses aloof and gets plus one final. Are there are only enemies in this deck? There we go. Attached to location. Attached to location gets plus one shroud. Shadow enemies at attached location get plus one fight and plus one horror. Double action. Discard deepening dusk. Okay. So let's say we move in. Let's say we move in. We play the Enchanted Blade. We use one off the catalog. Two off of here. Uh, and then we can use the blade on this guy. So he gets plus one fight and plus one damage. So we are attacking at four, five, six to three. We have minus four. Oh, that's right, I powered it. It gets plus two. Thank you, Super Fang. All right, so we have seven to three. We're golden. Five to three. Oh, that's rough, man. That's unfortunate. All right, well, that's, uh, that's Zoe. Okay, well... Uh, we're going to scroll the secrets ourselves. Put that into our hand. I don't see that, by the way. I'm not trying. I'm not registering that information. Did you count for the location's effect? Great question. Oh, good question. So we had seven, nine to three. Because we had four. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank you. That was a demo. I completely forgot about this. So we had four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we actually did kill it. We actually did kill it. That changes things completely. Because we got minus six. And nine minus six equals three. That was a demo. Gets MVP of the stream award. <clears throat> okay, we really want that clue. So we don't want to leave before it's too late, but we can do that next turn. We need one more clue to advance. We might as well just do that. So Min's gonna move in here uh, and we'll use the key ring. Well, we don't use the key ring until we uh, Fail. So we're testing four to one. Yeah, give me the four to one. Six to one? Cool. We'll grab the clue. And let's uh, spend the clue. And uh, we'll also destroy this key ring. Bing! 
The cat appears again on a tree limb just above you, grinning as ever. Truth is far more true when found than told, it purrs, but the shadows are growing long. Don't you think it's time you went home? Not your home, of course, but Alice's. It's in the neighborhood, you see. Put the set-aside abandoned house into play. I'm going to guess that it goes right here. Uh, this one. Okay, good. Triangle. Triangle. So it goes right here. Perfect. You know, that, that was an demo. I was just guessing where it went. I, as you can tell, I, I was looking at the card, and then I placed it in its actual place. I was just trying to call my shot, as it were. The lean investigator must immediately take control of the set-aside the Cheshire Crat Grinning Guide card. Shuffle the set-aside Cheshire Cat encounter set into the encounter deck. Okay. Permanent. When you would fail a skill test by exactly one, you automatically succeed instead. Flip the Cheshire Cat. When the player controlling the Cheshire Cat would be defeated or resign, choose another player. That player takes control of it. Hello, Russell. When you fail a skill test by exactly one. All right, we're going to give that to Zoe, I think. <laughs> so Chad does not seem to like this guy. <laughs> this is what I'm learning right now. Okay. Amid the chaotic overlap of this other world, an English country house has appeared in the neighborhood just south of you. If the, what the cat has suggested is true, the key to stopping these worlds mer from merging lies inside. After an investigator enters the abandoned house, we advance. You cannot enter abandoned house while there are clues on connecting locations. Oh, that's easy. We have to just get rid of these clues. I can do that in my sleep. Anyway, let's investigate at a uh, seven to three. We'll draw a card. Bing. I just got to internalize it. If I would fail by exactly one, if I would fail by exactly one, if I would fail by exactly one, if I would, if I would fail by exactly one, internalized. Upkeep, baby. All right, let me guess. We flip this, we flip a location over, it turns back down. The city is coming apart at the seams while shadowy creatures further unravel it by consuming anything they can tear apart. Buildings collapse as their bricks turn into ivory dominoes, street lamps pop and blossom like daisies, and the very ground shifts like a rug on a polished floor. As distortions grow stronger, you wonder if the changes can possibly be reversed. I actually don't want them to be, TBH. Alright, choose an Arkham location that is closest to Arkham Asylum that does not have the Wonderland trait. Wonderland, not Wonderland. <laughs> Flip that location to its Wonderland side and place player clues on it. Each investigator at that location takes one damage and one horror. If each Arkham location in play also has the Wonderland trait, each investigator who has not resigned is defeated and suffers a physical or mental trauma, your choice. Otherwise, flip this agenda back to its A side. All right, so this one flips over. And then the round, deal one horror to each investigator at Arkham Asylum. Oh yeah, that's spooky. That victory, though. That victory do be juicy. And I need as much victory as I can get. Okay. Let's see what our evil cards are. Oh yeah, I guess they'll do it for this one too. Twisted Citizen, location with the most clues. So we really don't want to like start removing... Like we want to like get clues... I mean, the reality is we want to get in this one before these two flip over. If we can get in here, then we can maybe start cleaning up other messes. All right, this fricker. God, there's so many enemies in this deck. What the hell's going on? Zoe's like, I'm just getting started. <laughs> like, please, stop. I'm just getting started. 
Uh, if there are no clues, it gains Hunter. And in the middle space, if there are any amount of clues on Twisted Sense location, place one Doom on it. Okay. Put Curious and Curiouser into playing your threat areas. Additional cause for you to investigate if there are more clues on any other locate on any location other than your location. Take one horror. Oh, that's that's a that's a that's a memory uh, issue waiting to waiting to trigger over here, chat. I'll tell you right now. Test brain three. If you succeed, discard Curiouser and Curiouser. All right. I don't trust you, cat. <laughs> is the inverse going to be when you would pass a test by exactly one, you f automatically fail instead? Is that the inverse of this guy, or is it is it something else? Ally question mark? Do you want to know? I'm sure I'll find out eventually. I'll find out. All right, let's move in here. Hello, we have a doom on you. Do that side and find it. I'm sure I will eventually, chat. I'm sure I will eventually. All right, we're going to attack this guy. We're going to power up the blade. We have four, five, six, seven to three. Honestly, give me this quick, tink quick thinking on this as well. I want an extra action, baby. I'm hungry. Ah! Cool. <laughs> so sick. Anyway, you're dead. Um, oh, it's not forced either. It's not forced. Interesting. Okay, uh, hey, yo, 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 yo. Give me a clue. Give me a clue. I'm going to start doing my job. You hear me, punks? I'm going to start do- I'm going to start doing my freaking job. You hear me? <laughs> it's my time to start doing my job. Anyway, we get a free action that we can use to take this here. I don't like these guys dealing extra horror. Give me the safeguard and we'll move down here. Okay. Min's gonna move in here. Oh, this MFRS Hunter. He actually should have been down here. Chat, he should have been down there. Oh, okay, I made a mistake. I gotta rewind, don't I? This guy is Hunter. Yeah. This fricker has Hunter. Okay, we gotta rewind. We gotta go back to the start of this turn. Luckily, that's a pretty easy rewind. I'm going to come here. Right, this guy goes here. This guy's with us. Our clue goes back here. This goes there. And we get this. Honestly, this turn might be nicer this way. It might be nicer. He attacks after hunting, right? Yeah, he would attack after hunting as well. Yes. So we would have taken a horror and a damage. It's plus one fight and plus one damage. Perfect. Okay. We are at the point where it should be. We were around pretty good. I did have the survival knife ready at that time, so we actually should have taken an attack too. You're right. Four, we have seven to two. Sweet. So this guy actually would be dead. Perfect. That was a demo. We ran around perfectly. All right. Easy. So then we just move up here. We do the attack with this. We commit that. We have four, five, six, seven, eight to three. It's dead. We do the thing. 
We get a bonus action back. We grab a clue. And honestly, I think we just then do this. <laughs> we just do what we what we did. Easy. Easy. Okay, now Min is gonna move in here. And we're gonna follow. Hey chat, do you think we hit? Do you think if we do this we hit? Do you think if we do this we hit? Do, are we gonna hit a, are we gonna hit something good here? Do it? Let's do it. We're gonna hit. Oh! -ho! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Alright. That worked? What the fuck? Is that allowed? <laughs> Is that allowed? Alright. Top of your deck, that card's weakness. Otherwise, you know your turn. Well, that card is in your discard pile. Commence each eligible skill you perform. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it here for the time being. But we have six to three. We have six to three, because I'm going to use my ability on this. Uh, eight to three. Nice. Minus one. There's one uh, under, uh, Wonderland location in play. So we're going to gain a clue, and I'll look at the top three cards in my deck. Is this the 21 Thumb Street deck? It was heavily inspired by the 21 Thumb Street deck. I did make some changes uh, for myself. Uh, specifically, no... Um, no hammer. No hammer. No, It's probably not going to be enchant weapon. Hmm. I got to put a card in my hand here, huh? Yeah, 21 Thumb Street in hard mode. But I'm a hard type of gamer. Uh, give me the deduction. I'll, like, never say no to a deduction. All right, well, then we're going to investigate again because we have this on this. So we're going to go five to three. Uh, I will use my lucky here to pass this test. I mean, technically, discard order in this game does matter. So, technically, this should be, like, this should be here. <laughs> technically, discard order does matter. Anyway, we'll look at the top three cards of our deck. Uh, give me... Uh, no, Min moved for her first action. Min moved for her first action. I moved here, uh, and then I played the Ridden in the Stars, and then I investigated twice. Oh, I really want to, if I, I need the, I want a Jeremiah Kirby, man. If I can get a Jeremiah Kirby, then we can, like, probably draw a good chunk of cards. I mean, just give me the lucky, I suppose. Cool. All right, upkeep phase. Oh, I should have used my scavenging, too. I, I'm going to return a, the, give me an old key ring. I have assets that do things, I promise. I was just pretty pogged up from that, uh, from the, uh, written in the stars actually hitting. Otherwise, while well, that card is in your discard pile, committed to each eligible skill test you perform. I suppose it does go to the top, doesn't it? All right, let's see some evil cards. Yeah, I think you're right. Are there only... I've been missing a Zoe's ability too. There's so much going on here. I shall, I'm gonna get, I should have a, I should have two more resources than I do. I'm just missing everything. Are there only enemies in this deck? Massive alert. If clues are at Panic Mob's location or spent by Investigator at Panic Mob's location, place one Doom on Panic Mob. Spend a clue. Parlay, deal two damage to Panicked Mob. Okay. Mm. 
Discard any number of cards from your hand or from play whose total cost is equal to or greater than your location's shroud value. If you cannot, take one damage and one horror. Three, bye! This cost is equal to or greater than your shroud location's shroud value. We just kill it, right? Min just kills it? <laughs> yeah, Min just kills it. Bye. Hmm. Alright, Zoe, why don't you just move in here? Yeah, means just look over there, then just come swinging. All right, after an investigator enters the abandoned house, we advance. You open the door to the quaint house and step inside hesitantly. The rooms are mostly bare, and what little furniture remains is covered with dusty white sheets. The whole search seems more futile by the moment until you enter a room whose only furnishing is a large mirror on the mantel above a fireplace. Curiously, the mirror surface ripples intermittently, and through it you can see an entirely different room. As you approach for a closer look, the scratching of the paws on the old wooden floor directs your attention back to the hall behind you. A white rabbit! What? what is, what's going on here, guys? Dressed in old Victorian clothing, dashes away, clutching a pocket watch and mumbling to itself. You won't get a, chan a chance to investigate both before Arkham unravels completely. The investigators must decide. We have to find out what that rabbit is up to. Put the set aside, the white rabbit into play at the abandoned house. Advanced Act 3A. Follow the white rabbit. We have to figure out how to get inside that mirror. Put the set aside, the looking glass into play at abandoned house. Advanced Act 3A through the looking glass. I want to follow the rabbit. I like the rabbit. Hello? Okay, uh, advanced to Act 3A, follow the white rabbit. Now yeah, there it is. So I can remove this one from the game, probably. I like the rabbit! <laughs> Holy shit. The white rabbit seems to have one thing you're looking for, for amid the constantly twisting landscape and purpose. Purpose, sorry. If there's any method to this madness, you'll find it wherever the rabbit is headed. If there are at least three player clues on this act, we advance. So, the rabbit. At the end of the round, move the white rabbit to the nearest location without an investigator. When you enter the white rabbit's location, test book or foot four. You may spend any amount of clues to get plus two skill value for this test, uh, for each clue spent. If you succeed, place one clue on the current act from the token bank. Whether you succeed or fail, move the white rabbit to the nearest location without an investigator. Oh, this is going to be... <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, that's, uh, that's poggy. This is, uh, is going to be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun. Okay. I've been watching a lot of Super Mario 64 speedruns, so we're just chasing the rabbit in the basement of Bowser's Castle for sure. Okay. Well... I'll draw a card. Uh, and then I think I'm pretty sure... No, because he'll stay here. His location is the nearest location without an investigator. How can we game this fucking rabbit? <laughs> That's what we're wondering here. Yeah, so if we stay here, he'll move up there. So we might as well just stay here. Give me another card. My weakness isn't scary. Um, spot the location farthest from me. Uh, one, two, one, two. Uh, they're all actually equally far from me. Hey, Charpy, how's it going?
I am. I am playing two-handed solo. So I think we actually put it up here. No. I mean, yeah, we put it up here because we can then cheat these clues off of this location. We will use, we will lose Greta, but that's like kind of the point. That's kind of the point of Greta. Okay. Uh, upkeep. Let's go. Two of three, evil card over here. Test brain three, if you fail, attach an abandoned reason to your location and place one doom on it. If an abandoned reason has no doom on it, we discard it. Take one horror, remove one doom from abandoned reason. All right, give me uh, a glimmer of hope. And we're gonna go six to three. Minus two, if you're at a Wonderland location, discard a card at random from your hand. Oh, that's a little bit uh, cool. So, see ya. Test Brain X, where X is equal to your location's shroud value. If you fail, search the encounter discard pile deck for a shadow enemy and spawn it engaged with you. If you search the encounter deck, shuffle it, then take one horror for each shadow enemy at your location. Thank you, Charby. You have a good uh, good time studying. All right, well, we're just going to run four to, four to two here, because if we draw the minus three, we'll flip the cat and see what that's all about. Uh, let's go. All right, we'll, we'll pass instead. Hey, I was right. I was 100% right. Uh, game designer, why isn't this a reaction ability? <laughs> uh, that is pretty spooky, though. That is a pretty spooky effect. Okay, sorry, Ra rabbit, you should be here, you dumb rabbit. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to have Min go first, I think. And Min's going to start by playing Jeremiah Kirby, and I'm going to say Odd. So we have one, two, three, four, five. I promise you I do have, my deck is like 15 Odd cards, so it is the right choice. We just also have skills in here. <laughs> Our deck is mostly Odd cards. Yes, that was in the original deck. It was. Okay. Let's move in here. Uh, hello, sir. I'm going to test five to four. <laughs> sure, you win this one. Let's go again! I'm not done with you yet, rabbit! Uh, I'm gonna commit this to go six to four. Eight to four? Sweet. All right, so the rabbit's then gonna move here, but we can place one clue on the current act. I'm not done with you yet, rabbit. This guy, this guy's scaring the crap out of me. I'll be completely honest with you guys. But we just have to hope and pray that we can just kill this thing. Let's use the blade. So we have four, five, six, seven. Seven to three. So the minus three gets us here. 
minus 1 is good enough. Uh, we're going to play the evidence, and I think I am going to kill Greta. Sorry, Greta. But the clues seem kind of nice here, TBA. So the, the victory seems nice. Sucks to lose this victory, but hopefully we can get back there and get it before we're done with this dumb rabbit. Uh, anyways, we're going to end our turn here, so we're going to take a horror. Upkeep. Uh, does this seem good to anyone else or just me? We might as well flip this one and get this one going. Investigators Independent Square get minus two skill value in all tests made on or against cards with the shadow trait. Surge! Shuffle any amount of cards from your hand back into your deck and draw an equal amount of cards. For each card you did not shuffle back into your deck, lose one resource. Um, I'll keep these two, I suppose. We draw four. That's called, that's weakness hunting right there. And that's going to surge into... If you keep it two, you can keep all... I wanted to do the shuffle, though. If you not control any clues, cognitive distance gains surge. All right, surge. Bye! See you later. Flip the Cheshire Cat, let's go! That's just called value? <laughs> That's just called value. <laughs> Fuck you, cat! Yeah. Test brain X or X is equal to your location shroud value. If you fail, search in counter deck and discard power for a shadow enemy and spawn and engaged with you. Uh, we'll go six to three for seven to three for this one. <sighs> okay. Let's see if there's a different shadow enemy. Zoe, you cannot take more. You gotta stop taking horror, Zoe. That's a rule. There was a lot of surges there. Okay. If animated... Uh, X is equal to the uh, engaged investigator's base fist. Animated shadow cannot make a tax of opportunity or be engaged by other investigators. If animated shadow is evaded, defeat it. If the investigator engaged with animated shadow is defeated or resigns, discard animated shadow. Hey, it's me. <laughs> I, I know that guy. It's me. Anyways, this guy can't make attacks of opportunity, so that's kind of sick. We have two glimmers, so the glimmers are going to start getting good here. That's kind of sick. I think we also want to start leaving things for the... Um, for our weakness. I got a resource. I think I gave myself the resource when this guy came.
I mean, I think we just move here. Uh, and then we just attack this guy with the knife. We have six to four. Minus two. He's dead. Well, that was easy. <laughs> well, it seems punching myself is actually uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, give me a card. Min! I'll move in here. Uh, we'll commit this true understanding to this test to go... I think Survival Knife works... With... Nah, man. Oh, it's a, it's a plus one. It's a plus one. So I actually did fail. I thought it was plus two. Sorry, my mistake. The upgraded one's plus two. So we do miss our attack. So this can go back in. We'll try again. I do still get to make an attack. I just did the wrong value. I actually could flip the cat, though. I'm gonna. We're gonna flip the cat. So we can just do it. I'll take that overpower back. Because we failed by two. Yeah, we'll flip the cat instead. Give me that overpower back. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, okay, so we are going to do this test. We have four, five, six, seven to four. Seven to four. Sweet. Um, we'll grab a clue from our location. Spend one resource. There's the top six cards of your deck for an item or spell, and we draw it. We really don't need to go to the train station. We really want to end up over there if we can. Uh, we'll investigate for our last action. Sorry, our second action. We have one action left. Uh, we have four, five, six, seven. Seven to four. Minus two. Nice. We'll draw a card. That's good. All right, uh, then we'll move here for our last action, and we'll test the thing. We're just going five to four here. Um, sorry, I should have a clue up here. Bing. Yeah, we'll just go five to four. Do I believe? I believe. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm a freaking idiot. Upkeep. Well, I've, uh, I think it's because doesn't Survival Knife 2 have plus 2 for the top action? In my mind, I've only, play, I've only played with Survival Knife 2 so much, so it brainwashed me. You have a card over here. Mm -hmm. v, 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 v value baby! Flip the cat. Oh, you fool. Attach impossible paths to your location. When you would take an action to move from attached location, test foot zero. This test difficulty increases by one for each location connected to your location. If you fail, cancel the effects of the move. That card's pretty soft, TBH. Yeah, in addition to making it before. Yeah, Survival Knife 2 is, is pretty poggy. In all fairness, I also make dumb mistakes, especially when I'm playing a custom campaign for the first time, because they have a lot of memory space, and my brain's RAM uh, runs out pretty quickly. <laughs> Alright, well, we'll just spend two actions and get rid of this. Uh, then we'll move down here. We're testing two to four. If we spend all of these, we go eight to four. Let's do it. Thank you. Yeah, all my brain power is on trying to learn the scenario. And then I'm also like talking to you guys because you guys are all super sick. Yeah, and then I gotta make sure my stream's not crashing. <laughs> 
Love to spend three clues to put one clue on the act. That's called value. <laughs> Have you heard of it, guys? It's called value. All right, well, we have a we have a pretty simple plan here. And step one is Min's going to move in here. We're going to go five. We'll go six to four. I don't get it back though. Has to be a skill card. Move this guy over here. Still kind of nice though. We're going to move in here. <sighs> yeah, I want exactly. I want them in my discard pile. No, it's it's nice. I mean, it's still nice, right? It's, it's good to still just have uh, to pass a test. All right, so we're testing five to four. Spend these clues, babies. Let's go uh, a million to four. And by that, I mean nine to four. <laughs> uh, for our last action, we're going to investigate here. We have five to four. We're going to go seven to four. <laughs> ah, he's unstoppable. The rumors were true. This one I do get back, though. All right, we'll move this guy up here for the end of the round. Uh, I take one and one. We go upkeep. Yeah, on a deduction, too, no doubt. Hello, phone. How's it going? Two of three. Evil card over here is Abandoned Reason. Test Brain 3. If you fail, attach to your location and place one Doom on it. If it has no Doom on it, this, I mean, I don't care. We're just going to go four to three. Oh, it moves to... It stays on its current location. So it only runs if I run. Perfect. We pass. What we got over here? Uh, Two. Bye bye backpack for my hand. Play area. Alrighty. Um, Min is going to move in here and we're going to attempt to talk to this rabbit. I'll spend two clues to go nine to four. Sweet. Uh, let's flip this. Following the rabbit is no easy task. It moves rapidly through the uns. It's six, right? Nice. Through the unstable terrain without sparing a moment to notice you. You nearly lose track of it in a thick tangle of bushes, but finally catch a glimpse of the rabbit leaping down a hole. You approach the rabbit hole in exasperation, wondering how to proceed, but as you stand there, the hole slowly widens to a much larger and seemingly bottomless pit. You look to the cat for advice, but it merely grins, waiting for you to act. Foolish as it seems, you steal your nerves and leap into the pit. The stream description is officially wrong. You can't take my brain space like this. Now I need to alt tab over, wait for that to load. Oh, it's true, I did not go through the looking guys. Look at that, look at that, okay. Uh, resolution one. Excuse me, there you are. Huh. <sighs> The terror of diving into the pit quickly fades to apprehension and soon curiosity. The counted seconds stretch to minutes. Uh, though easily tracked by the constant ticking of the clocks lining the walls of the rabbit hole. Just as you wonder if you might very well fall and infinitely the ground suddenly rises below you and you land with surprisingly little impact. Rising to your feet, you spy the fleeting form of the white rabbit once again sprinting down a long corridor before you. With no way back up, and Arkham likely in shambles anyhow, you have little choice but to continue following the strange creature. The corridors wind endlessly, diverging and converging like the tunnels of an ant colony. Doors fill every part of the walls, no two alike in shape, size, or style. 
Your curiosity is stifled, however, as you find each solidly locked. With no alternative but to continue down the hallway, you soldier onward in pursuit of the rabbit. We went down the rabbit hole. Down the rabbit hole. Exclamation mark. We get victory X. Uh, we do have a good chunk of victory. I think we have five, maybe six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a good chunk. It's a good chunk. Okay. Um, skip to resolution three. Uh, I do hope you'll forgive our cold hospitality. A welcoming committee simply couldn't be arranged. The Cheshire Cat appears before you, its grin ever constant. For the first time since the danger started, you at least have a moment to chastise the cat. Appearing and disappearing, helping you and hindering you. I mean, he didn't really hinder me, baby. He was all positive. Uh, it only proves to muddle your understanding of the bizarre events. I'm afraid I can't help it. The cat purrs serenely. My nature is madness. Everyone is mad in Wonderland, you see? You yourself are beginning to go mad or else you wouldn't be here. You like to refute the cat, but you feel as though if you're already walking the path of madness, trying to save Arkham from these bizarre occurrences, not only that, you are talking to a freaking cat. The Cheshire Cat orbits you slowly, observing you from all angles as it speaks. Still, I am a creature of Wonderland, and it is in my best interest to preserve my home, just as it is your best interest to preserve yours. Quizzically, Alice has entrusted you with both. The cat rises up to stare you in the eye at an uncomfortably close distance. You'll carry on, of course, but how will you carry on? Like a surgeon cutting out the infection, its head detaches to punctuate the point, or like a miner blasting all to oblivion. The cat's body scatters as if blown apart, but the head remains eerily in place. Whether you trim gently or tear it out by the roots, any future is preferable to being consumed utterly. Alice would agree, I should think. Assuming, assuming she is still lucid after being made into the gateway, of course. The cat's head fades away, leaving only its green, grin behind once more. You have a lot to consider in a long road ahead. As you travel through Alice's dreams, the fate of the mad realm of Wonderland also rests within your hands. Each denizen that you aid or destroy has a direct effect on the stability of the dreams. Whoa. It may seem like a simple choice to cooperate with and save everyone you can, but the stronger Wonderland is, the more easily Gurath Naka can use it to strike out against the waking world. Will you protect Wonderland while bolstering the shadows, or will you burn it away as you cauterize the wounds that the Eater of Dreams inflicted on Arkham? How will Alice's psyche fare as you traverse her strange dreams? Be aware of anything that could help preserve her sanity. Man, I feel like we're getting like a freaking. this is like, next time on. It's exciting. Check your campaign log. If we went down the rabbit hole, we go to the dodo. <sighs> what? All right. If the investigators went down the rabbit hole, we go secret entrance. The endless march down the corridor of doors ends at long last as the hallway dead ends in a small en en enclave. In the center of the area stands a ta glass table with two curious objects on top. A bottle labeled Drink Me and a cake with the words Eat Me written in its decorations. You can scan the walls for any other way forward and are shocked to discover an open door, only one that is scarcely knee-high and impossible to squeeze through. With endless wandering as your only alternative, you resolve to find a way through. Minutes pass without success, and you return to consider the strange refreshments on the glass table. If this truly is part of Alice's dreams, then there's a chance that they might not be dangerous, and perhaps might even help. You pop the cork on the bottle and take a wary sip, but the drink's effects quickly flow through you. At first it seems like the room is growing larger, but you soon realize that you are shrinking! Tiny men! You brace for the worst, but find that the effect stops as you reach the height to the easily pass through the tiny door. At long last, you make your way forward to any sights, to any sights and sounds of, of a vast sea. Anyone investigator may choose to add strange refreshments to his or her deck. This card does not count towards the investigator's size. Excuse me. Strange refreshments. Uses four portions. If Strange Refreshments has no push portions on it, discard it. Ah. 
I mean, that's probably fine for men, right? Yeah, get huge or get tiny, it's true. It's probably fine for men. I want to say this the nicest way I can, though, and it's not going to be that nice, but I kind of don't want to put this in my deck because I don't want to look at this art. <laughs> But yeah, it probably just goes into man. Uh, skip to the caucus race. A scene of commotion catches your uh, as your eye as you step over a small dune and look down toward the shoreline. A motley pack of animals dashes about seemingly without direction or destination. From the center, a dodo shouts words of action as he runs down a short rut in the sand. Yes, that's it! Up that sandal there, down the other side. There's no faster way to get dry. Dry, the suggestion seems absurd when most of their paths wander into and out of the surf. You walk over to investigate the bizarre event and notice the animals are in a sorry state as you approach closer. Some of the less hardy creatures have collapsed completely while others don't appear to be breathing whatsoever. Shit, they're dead. They're fucking dead. The dodo urges them onward all the same, seemingly oblivious to their exhaustion, let alone its own. The race must be run until the race is won. Come, you must join us. The investigators must decide. We have to stop them from hurting ourselves. We want nothing to do with uh, this nonsense. Well, let's go resting on laurels. Let's, let's proceed. All right. You hold the dodo in place and assure him that the race is over. At last, the dodo cries out. The race is over and everybody has won. The other animals ease to a stop, collapsing onto the sand with relieved groans. There must be prizes for the winners, the dodo rasps. And he looks to you with a wild look as his frail body shivers with exhaustion. You rifle through your pockets and produce a number of random items which the animals grab covetously. As the surviving racers begin recovering, the dodo hobbles back over to you. Fair play is satisfied. We have been running the caucus race ever since the pool of tears ran into the sea. Now at last, we are truly dry. You humor the, humor the bird with a polite nod, like, okay, sure, buddy, yeah, 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 yeah. Finally, we can return to more academic pursuits. Perhaps I may educate you on the matter. In your campaign log, under the tally mark, record one, under the strength... Strength of Wonderland, one. In your campaign log, under Wonderland Boons, record the dodo. The dodo. Add a skull to the uh, chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's easy. That's even easier. The dodo! I don't need to worry about space. Perfect. Okay. Skip to guidance from Alice. You depart from the bizarre spectacle, following the shoreline steadily. Landmarks are far and few between, making the beach seem endless in either direction. As you ponder where to head next, the sound of the sea wind changes, and you hear faint tones resembling Alice's voice, though the words are indiscernible. You look out over the surf, and to your astonishment, the tide recedes all at once, leaving behind an arrangement of stones and shells. The debris portrays a vague map of your current position, with a series of arrows pointing down the beach and then inland. You breathe a sigh of relief as you make a mental note of the map's layout. No matter what lunacy may lie ahead, this is Alice's dream at its core. You don't know what degree of influence she holds over Wonderland and the state, but it's one less burden on your shoulders. Check your campaign log. If we went down the rabbit hole, we go to scenario 2A, Sea of Troubles. Interesting. Really interesting. Really interesting. All right. Okay. Well, that is it for this episode. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And a huge shout out. I think it's this button. Yeah. It's all of our patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, you guys all, uh, you all rock. Thank you for being awesome. 
If you want to support the channel with a Patreon, you can go down in the description of this YouTube video to find a link to our Patreon channel. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.